the kinetic theory. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the kinetic theory. And uh, basically, the kinetic theory is a very important uh, theory in chemistry because it explains how all particles in matter behave. Um, so in chemistry, we have to make a lot of assumptions in order for theories to be correct. So there's basically three assumptions that have to be maintained in order for this theory to be correct. Number one, all matter is composed of small particles. These particles are in constant random motion. These particles are colliding with each other and the walls of their container. All right, so it's kind of a no-brainer that thermal energy and kinetic energy are related. You may not have termed it like that, but you've seen that many, many times before. For example, the more heat you apply, the more likely the substance is to become a gas, right? So if you're heating water, eventually it's going to all evaporate. Okay, so kinetic energy and thermal energy have a relationship. Thermal energy is dependent upon the temperature of a substance. That's basically the definition of what thermal energy is. The higher the temperature, the more thermal energy there is. Kinetic energy is, of course, the energy of motion. So basically, when we put these two together, the more heat or the more thermal energy, the more things are going to be moving around. Okay, so basically we talk about four states of matter. We have solids, liquids, gases, and of course plasma. All right, we don't want to skip solids. Let's go back there. All right, a solid is a state of matter that has a definite shape and a definite volume. That means that it doesn't change. Its shape and its volume stays the same. No matter what environment it's in, it's always going to stay the same. The term definite means the shape doesn't change as you move it. An example is a remote control. If I have the remote control in my living room or if I take it in the kitchen, it doesn't matter. As long as the temperature and pressure stays the same, it stays, it's going to be still be a solid. It's going to have the same shape and the same volume. Liquids are the state of matter that has a definite volume, but not a definite shape. Okay, um, liquids change and take up the shape of whatever they're in. For example, a cup of water. If you dump it into a different shape of a cup, then it's going to change shape. I always use the example of if I have a Mickey Mouse cup or if I have a bottle of water. If I have a bottle of water, the shape of the water is going to be the same as the shape of the bottle. Um, let's pretend like it's 16 ounces. That's the volume. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be 16 ounces. If I take that bottle of water and put it in a Mickey Mouse cup, it's still going to be 16 ounces of water. It's still going to have the same volume, but now it's going to have the shape of the Mickey Mouse cup. All right, gases have an indefinite shape, so they don't have a definite shape, and they don't have a definite volume. They take up the shape in the container of the volume that they're in. Uh, the reason is, is because gas molecules are moving so fast, over 1,600 kilometers per hour. And they're really spread apart. So whenever you change whatever they're in, they actually take up that shape of that container. And of course, we're not going to talk much about plasma, but plasma is actually what 99% of all the matter in the universe um, is composed of. But um, because there's not very much of it here on Earth, we don't really encounter it. But it is actually the, um, the state of matter that exists at the highest temperature. And the sun has plasma on it. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the behavior of gases. Uh, like I said before, particles in a gas are never at rest. They're moving very, very fast, over 1,600 kilometers per hour. Some move faster than others. There are forces of attraction among the particles, of course, as they collide with one another. And they are colliding, right? They're colliding with, themselves, with each other. They're colliding with the container. Um, in the kinetic theory of gases, we ignore the attraction between the, the um, particles because that kind of helps our theory be correct. All right. Liquids, remember, also have kinetic energy. They're moving also. They're just not moving as fast as the gas. And so therefore, because they're moving slowly, they're actually more attracted to one another. And those forces of attraction slow them down. Like we said before, the liquid takes the shape of its container. 
solids are barely moving. And I kind of find this really hard to believe, but it is a true, it is true that solids, the atoms in a solid are moving. So if you look at your desk, if you look down on your desk, the, mo the atoms in there are vibrating. You may not see that, but they are. So all molecules are doing some kind of motion. In a solid, the motion is vibrating. Uh, and just remember, they have a definite shape and a definite volume, and they vibrate around a fixed location. Okay, so the way that I always remember it is I picture a baseball game, and I'm not really a baseball fan, so uh, sometimes I like to picture football games, but let's kind of make it an analogy of a baseball game. All right, the solids are the people in the stands. They're sitting in their seat. Yeah, they can move around and talk to the person next to them or clap or or maybe drink their drink or eat their food, but they're kind of stuck there in that fixed location, sitting in their seat. Okay, the liquids would be like people in the aisle. So as you're at a game and you're hungry and you want to get up, you jump up, you walk past the people. You might kind of bump into the people that are sitting next to you. And, and as you go up the stairs and go into the aisles to get your food, you might run into people. Might You know, it's kind of crowded, but you still you're able to be moving more freely. And then, of course, the gases are like the players out in the field. They're way spread out. Those guys are moving all over the place trying to catch the ball. And... Um, so that's kind of the analogy that I would use as far as the main states of matter.